I think the gig for people to go to that didn't go to day four of Waymad was Weird Al Yankovic last night. Oh, yeah, source. Uh, actually, Kate. Kate was at that. That's she why I oh, mentioned it. I was bummed it was sold out. Oh, really? And he played at Norwood Town Hall. What a Friend weird venue. Norwood Town Hall. Yeah. Yeah, Friend right. Is that, pod, that, is that that like Irish little thing on the corner on, no, on the parade? That's, yeah, that's the Norwood Hotel. Hotel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Finn McCool's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Weird Al Yankovic. Finn McCool's. I did see the Bad Loves there once, but no, I think Weird Al <laughs> deserves a better venue. Slightly better. <laughs> Throw back to season one with the Bad Loves. Oh, they're right. <laughs> how, how was uh, Womad? Well, yeah, great. Womad. Womad. Do you say Womad? Woeful. Womad. Womad. It was, they should rename it Woeful. Woeful. I enjoyed it, but I had a four-day pass and just rolled in whenever I wanted. So yeah. I didn't sort of spend the whole day there, like poor Lauren. I didn't yeah. spend the whole day there either, but it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I saw. I was kind of envious because I didn't go to any of it. The people just rolling out to the fringe and then rolling back into mm. the festival kind of looked. That kind of looked fun. But yeah. we heard, you heard some horror stories on Reddit and stuff about toilets. Yeah, the toilets um, situation was an absolute disaster. Yeah. Shit show. Yeah. Literal if you will. shit show. <laughs> Literal, yeah. There was plenty of germs going on, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, it wasn't. None of those bougie hippies wipe. Oh, <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> what was the highlight, though? Uh, for me, it was Aurora oh, yeah. and then Florence. But yeah. Yeah, that was quite a crowd at Florence. It was too many, but yeah. huge. 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 Speaking huge. of huge. <laughs> Welcome back to the Here We Crow podcast. This is season two, episode one. We're back after taking a week off because Dan went to Sydney. Hello, Dan. Hello, Samuel. Hello, Lauren. Hi. And hello, Ben. Howdy, Sam. If I can interrupt your introduction <laughs> for a second now. <laughs> I knew you were going to do this. I'd just like to, <laughs> to bring up the, uh, the, the man who recorded our introduction in like spine tingling pace mm. <laughs> he's getting married on friday night oh congrats ed, ed mitchell nice um so congrats ed i know you're not listening because you're a cat supporter but you know whatever are you going along yeah where yeah, is it's it in kangaroo island oh so yeah very bougie fancy yeah heading over um he's not getting a present because of that because <laughs> <laughs> you had to pay for the ferry <laughs> yeah it cost too much uh so is it fair to say that we're pretty excited? Footy's back. That's exciting to it start is. with. But are we excited about the Crow season? Oh, we? I'm amped after yeah. the preseason. Yeah. We did not feel like this last year. It did. It hasn't <laughs> felt time. like this preseason for a while, I don't think. We're going in with a bit of expectation. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but it's it's nice. It gives us some stuff to talk about, I guess. I wouldn't say I have any expectations. I can Maybe. like to keep those low, but um, yeah, that's fair. I, I like what I saw. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I feel like there's a bit of a buzz about a, a basic um, expectation that we might be better than Port this year, but um, we'll see. That'd be nice. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, I, I don't personally see it happening, but that would be lovely. Ah, yeah, but we can I talk do. about that because you know what? Faith. We're going to talk about season predictions tonight. Yeah. Uh, what we think we're going to do. Maybe some what's going to happen in the league. Uh, Feberden, oh. everyone's favourite topic. Uh, we'll just do a little bit on that, actually. If anyone really wants to deep dive on it, go listen to Crowcast because they spent 15 <laughs> minutes on it. It's actually quite good. Uh, Bryce Baggs, a new segment. Dan's, Dan's <laughs> written a ditty. Uh, <laughs> Bryce, is, Bryce has amped up his hatred of the Crows this uh, pre-season, which is fun to see. Uh, and Bargain Bin. Is back. Oh, your I've segment got is lots. back. I've, back from the I've, other episode where it was on. I filled up <laughs> two week. I had a week off, so I filled up <laughs> two weeks of bargains. Bring it on. But and, first, and did you oh. say it was uh, episode forty seven? Did you say? Oh, so yes, episode <laughs> forty seven. Sorry, like Dan last week, and I was giving him a heap of shit. Uh, I've forgotten how to host as well. So yes, what do you got there, Ben? Uh, yes, so we're, the numbers are dwindling a little bit, but we did have a Dean Howard. First War of the 47 in oh, 1999, played two games <laughs> as a midfielder, originally from the Gold Coast. Do you know? <laughs> All right. Not the <laughs> Suns, though. Well before the oh, Suns. Yeah. Oh, wait, you're still Good going. jawline. Yeah. It's a very strong jawline. Uh, Matthew Wright wore the number for a while for 41 games from 2011 to 12, and Jake Kelly wore it for oh. 10, oh, 10 games. Oh, handsome Jake. And so overall, the number 47 has been played by the Crows 53 times in their history. Wow, that's 53 a good 53 matches, 32 goals have been kicked. 
and Brownlow votes they have scored three. Who's uh, has someone got it this year? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Two will answer in unison. Yeah, yeah. You well, might have found that I only looked at the uh, history website about the number. Yeah, Lauren well, was super come back impressed, to us. but all come that info was there written down. And well, I didn't think he pulled it out of nowhere. No. <laughs> but the fact he went to find it no, was your impressive. Job, your job while we do this is to find who's the, that this year. We should know. Good I thought you were going to say something. Oh, I was, but I didn't know if it was appropriate. I didn't. You I didn't just butt in like you, mate. <laughs> Uh, so the person wearing 47 this year does not exist. Okay. Oh, so you were right. So we knew. Place. Yeah, we cut that out. Uh, no, nah, leave it in. Yeah. Um, but also, um, I just wanted to say, because of you know, we heard Shane McAdam's voice in that intro, in the stinger, mm. um, that we didn't see as much Shane McAdam content on social media this week. We didn't. What was that about? Mm. Um, obviously, I haven't been tweeting enough. I Do don't, you think I don't they know. heard the episode and they thought, oh, we better cool down a bit? Well, I did tell them just to chill out a little bit. Um, <laughs> I've only got – I thought I only had time for one hot crush, but I actually have time for two in the Ooh. second one. Ooh. I'm on the Pedro Pascal train. Oh, I don't yeah. – like, I'm on it. I'm yeah, on board. Yeah, You don't know who that is? <sighs> Get away. <laughs> anyway. Is he continue. on that show? The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. And the Mandal- he's the Mandalorian. Yeah, he's oh, in everything at the moment. Yeah. yeah, but wait for my segment and talk about the Mandalorian. Jesus. Oh, yeah. is it back? Yeah. All right, I'm so far behind. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, we got a we got a beer. Yeah. Uh, this beer is labelless. Uh, I've been doing a bit of work for a local brewery called Mephisto, and he got me out to do some shots of his uh, canning process out at Big Shed on oh, Friday. I thought you meant do some shots, like oh you know, no, <laughs> a few shots of beer. Yeah, no, have you done? Have you yeah. done the hundred shots in hundred minutes? No, of course I haven't. Yeah, usually Who you most talking people to? spew around the, like <laughs> 60, 70 mark. It seems easy to start with, but yeah, it gets. Give me crew. Christmas party? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Mephisto Brewing Company Stout. Uh, it is delicious. Oh, who, a bit is warm someone for not stout, a stout mate? No, I just guessed it was a stout because it was a black can. Oh, because, yeah, and it was also very black. Yeah. So this is unlabeled. These cans are the ones that were dented and uh, maybe slight underfills. Oh, I thought we were going to have to put them under a UV light or something. <laughs> yeah, no. no, these just hadn't gone through Oof. the labeling process. Um, this has been a really nice beer. Uh, for the few times I've had it in the past, it's it's coming through reasonably bitter, which I think will calm down over the <laughs> next little while. But it's it, obviously because it was only canned on Friday, it's uh, still showing a fair bit of that. But How many it, standard drinks has this been? Feels like um, a stitch up at this point, Sam. Sam. Uh, there's an, there's an actual can there. What does it say on that? Here, Sam. Sam, I'm Sam. Come to my house and have some 14.5 percent beer, <laughs> and then drive home. Labeled because I can just uh, drive safe. No, no, it's actually pretty reasonable. 5.9. So okay. yeah, it's, actually, sure. it's fine. I wouldn't give you eight point. You guys are driving. I'm not that, <laughs> not that silly. Uh, but if anyone sees these around, uh, they've got a pale ale. They've got a wheat beer. Um, they've got a pilsner out there now. It is uh, it is very well made local beer. And I'm not just saying that because I work for him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, discuss it. What we thought of it at the end. Who's going first with music? Oh, look, I'll go first. I'm very excited <laughs> to talk about this band. Um, they are they've quickly become one of my favourite Australian bands, uh, known mainly for their live show. They're called Private Function. Not to be um, confused by your local hall um, being booked out for a private function as they like to make the joke of all the time. They're from Melbourne, um, and they've put out a few hilarious albums. They always include a cover, um, generally speaking. Their cover of Minotto was King of the Mountain is definitely one of the highlights, I think. But, yeah, like I said, the live show is where it's at for this band. (laughs) They've just released a hilarious um, single called Just Having a Geese, which is literally about just rolling around your shops just looking at things but not actually aiming to buy anything, which I think is a great topic (laughs) for a song. Um, And here it is. That is private function. Thanks for making the editing hard there, Lauren. I don't know. That was not me. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> uh, private function. If you get a chance to see them live, do it. The last time I saw them, they smashed pumpkins on the ground before playing Smashing Pumpkins covers and had a enema of a wine bottle at the end of the show, mm. which was uh, hilarious. Lauren? Uh, 
it's no secret that I love Private Function. They are so fun. Um, speaking of their covers, one of my favourite ones they did was uh, Fox on the Run. So good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, their live show is awesome. And yeah, you got to see them at least once. They even covered Yellow by Coldplay last time, which you'd think would be totally cringe, but it was hilarious. It was punk and it was funny. They played Meredith Music Festival and uh, they did a cover of Jackie. Remember? Jack, Jack, yeah. Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> and they brought out Joanna. No who way. sings the song. Yeah, right. Yeah, amazing. amazing. Yeah, they did Yellow at the Beer and Barbecue Fest. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah it nice. was great. No, they were very, very fun live. I'd not heard of anything from them before. I saw them live and, yeah, I was a fan afterwards. It's worth it. And Ben, any comments? Um, yeah, I think the fact that they're not taking themselves seriously makes it uh, more enjoyable for me. Good. That's positive. <laughs> very positive. Lauren. That's good. Uh, today I have a local band... I actually struggled to pick a song this week because there's been so much uh, good new music um, that's come out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Jen Chloe has released a new album, Get Around It. Uh, Fever Ray has just released a new record. I was going to play some of that, but I think it's probably a little bit too cray for you peeps. So I thought I'd go something a bit local. Uh, the <laughs> band are called Twine, uh, local, I think, five piece out of Adelaide. Uh, all all youngins and Dan, I think you'll like this song that I'm about to play because um, for a song that was released last year in 2022, this has taken me all the way back to 2002, 2001, the prime post-punk emo era. Uh, so let's hear Twine with same old problems. Start out. But um, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that. Really took me back to some emo times. Emo times. Mm. But back, the only difference is back in those emo times you were talking about, they still sung with American accents. That's true. Yeah, everyone's embraced the Aussie. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I liked it. However, I have one question, and it's just had me thinking: Do we have enough talk core bands in Adelaide? Because there's no. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, there's a lot of them. Is there? Yeah, I think so. I don't know any of them. Yeah. Uh, Sam, what do you think? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I quite liked it. Started off sounding a little bit like like drones or something, but then obviously it picked up. Yeah. So. Ben. Um, yeah, the talking stuff um, is an interesting one. Um, didn't mind the the music in the background and sort of emulating the emotion of it all, but yeah, the um, highly Australian talking. It's just I don't know. It's, it's get, just it's really different go. different for me. No. No, oh, you like it. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to see Twine live, they're playing this Friday at the Scenic Hotel with uh, another cool band, Mini Skirt, who are playing oh, also at Port Nalunga Football Club. Um, Fitzy is putting on a big show. He was going to come on and talk um, about it with us tonight, but unfortunately, Stitch he's a busy up. man. No, he's Stitch just a busy up. man. <laughs> um, Cosmic Psychos are playing that show along with Bad Dreams and a bunch of other awesome bands. So come on down. I'll be there. Hopefully hassling Andrew Jarman. <laughs> is he going to do that? I would assume, seeing as he is the coach of Port Alunga Football Club. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No one asked for this, but Ben's got a song. What do we got? <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Um, <laughs> I've rattled him. <laughs> has he prepared one? Yeah, he has. Um, yeah, just no, I've got yeah. a song. So this is basically my hope for the theme of our season this year. Um, gone back to the well of Radiohead, but it's a, from their album in 2007 – in rainbows and it's called Jigsaw Falling Into Place. But yeah, so I'd hoped to play that song last year but it didn't really seem right <laughs> <laughs> with the way we were going so... Whereas now, I don't know, I think we, you know, we, you know, we've had Dawson for a year, Rankin's come in, the draftees we've picked recently are starting to show something. So it just feels like you know we're starting to get there. 
some of the lyrics they've got, you know, Wish Away the Nightmare, which has been the last five years of The Crows. Um, she Looks Back, You Look Back, Not Just Once, Not Just Twice, a bit, you know, a bit like how we've played in the last five years. Um, but now, you know, we've got a light on our back and it's all coming into place. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. I just absolutely love that song. It's one of my favourite Radiohead songs. It's just, my written tone. Yep. Just on your comment about uh, the last five years or Radiohead's comment <laughs> being a, a, a nightmare, it's crazy to think five years and outside of that five years our coach got murdered. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like yeah. that's probably the biggest nightmare that could possibly happen. To yeah. And it's crazy that we went into that grand final not being the fairy tale team even though our coach had been murdered. Yeah. But anyway, we digress. We can't mm. do anything right. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want to know what's in the spring, get into Rowan Jarman. Oh, I've had two weeks to pile up some shit. Yeah, here we All go. All right, okay. Let me let me just scroll. Oh I'm going to scroll back up. I heard it only took four days. It won't man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good things. Uh, has anyone been to the Olivia Bar on Hutt Street? Does anyone even know of it? I know of it. Haven't been there. It's actually really cool. I you you could pull up out the front, which I did uh, with uh, with someone uh, last week, and I still didn't know where it was, even though I was directly outside of it. Really cool little bar serving some really cool drinks. Just like super relaxed. Better than Bartorino? Well, you like that place? Yeah, I don't mind Bartorino. Oh, okay. They do a good mulled wine there. Oh, do they? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, because the Chianti. No, mulled wine, sangria. Yeah. One of them. Okay. Both good. Yeah. Oh, I've just had uh, bad past work experiences with them. So. Oh, okay. Well. So that's the only reason. Yeah. I was sort of questioning it. Uh, good things as well. Uh, oh look, I put Liverpool beating Man U, not that you guys care, 7-0 in here, but that was also two weeks ago and Liverpool lost to relegation, threatened Bournemouth on the weekend. So, <laughs> How did um, Richmond AFC go? AFC Richmond. They don't exist. Can I tell you something funny really quickly to segue off of that? Is that I looked on sports bet today and you can bet on what happens in Ted Lasso. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Season two. <laughs> It, when does it, it starts tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. you can literally yeah. bet on the first batch they play in season in the first wow. episode and who wins it or is, is it a draw? I'm like, if you knew someone who was actually involved in the show, could yeah. you just find out? And yeah, but yeah. they limit your bets, so they they know it's limited liability for yeah, them. So. I might just hit up um, Roy Kent and ask him. Roy Kent, <laughs> <laughs> I love Roy Kent. His name's like Brett Holstein or something. I listen to his podcast. Thanks, I'll hit him up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else we got in here? We have, uh, oh, I, I don't get a music segment, so I'm going to throw it in here anyway. I know Dan's been enjoying it, but Slow Tie's new album, um, I'm a big fan. I think that it is a nice, like, gen- genre-busting album. Which well, don't just come in here with your music recommendations sorry. outside <laughs> of the pre-game warm-up. Like, you can't, sorry. All <laughs> you right. can't just do that. All right, moving like, on. You have the guts to actually put a song in. No, you guys don't let me. No, there's no you're dead. hosting. You yeah, get that's to true. Yeah, you I don't like it. editing the songs. That's so. true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> uh, Kane arguing with Kingy on SEN about the Crows winning more games than Richmond and Fogg potentially winning the Coleman. So I thought that was, you know, Kane's kind of on a bit of a positive tear with the Crows this he, week. He isn't did he? this at the start of last year, don't be fooled. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, he just, I think he just likes to turn the attention away from Port a little bit, yeah. just in case they're rubbish. Uh, but the best thing that happened over the last week is uh, I own a very, very small percentage of a horse and it finally won. <laughs> All right, Brady Smith, calm right. down. <laughs> yep, three races in, broke its maiden. Wait for it next next prep. It's going to get over a bit further. It's going to be a great, great Yawn. horse. Next. Footwear sacrificed at half price and equipment slashed to half price. Rowan Jarman huge half price sale. Don't miss it. Now, just hey, before. Oh, no, oh. I was going to cut in, Dan. That's what? my turn. Can I cut in after you? Yeah. Right. I was going to say, I, no, can't, I can't believe, neither. Sam, that you didn't have in your goods um, Isaac Rankin's special handshakes with all the forwards. No, I don't like that sort of thing. Oh. In my bad. <laughs> Now, in my bad, and it's a segue, I use the word segue again, after um, after Sam's last good, is, and gamble responsibly, please, listeners, but Sam not putting a bet on his own horse <laughs> yeah. in our bet with mates group. Yeah. I'm sure he had a bet in his own. No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. I didn't actually back it, so right, well, I, might, I might never be able to back it ever again. Look, I'll take it back since you didn't just rape, take all the money yourself. Yeah. Well, Mick Kent has got it, and he was just like, look, you can back it if you want to. We're not. We're not going to be back in it for heaps ourselves. So that's what turned me off. It was paying nicely though. Well, 450. Yeah, it would have been nice. Gamble responsibly. Gamble responsibly, of course. Uh bad things. Mandalorian. 
Mandalorian is an absolute shit out show. It really is. Like, it has is it just always so been, or boring. are you just saying now? No, nah, it's just it's always been boring. I think it's just got such a formulaic, terrible um, like script that just this just repeats itself over and does, over and s- over. Does Lizzie again. like? I it? hate to break it to you, Sam, but it is a children's show. Is it? That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's it. The target audience is not you. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> they, it worked. Um, <laughs> Rob placing the uh, the ball down the neck of Jamie Cripps in uh, the West Coast game. Did anybody see that? Absolutely couldn't have hit him any better and uh, nailed a goal straight after. Good old Rob. Yeah. Didn't see it. Didn't see it? Oh, good. This is going well. Uh, <laughs> Cochin getting off the tribunal again. Oh, oh that, yeah. Oh, finally got what something out of you. Guys. <laughs> Fucking hell. How does he get away with it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Constant. Cochin defence. Yeah. It's, um, he, he, would you say he's the most looked after player in yes. NFL history? Yeah. He just, Ish. it is insane. It that is. He just continuously gets off. Uh, the East End of Adelaide at fringe time. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Tell, yeah. us, uh, tell us about your weekend. My weekend? You were You were out. You were out and about. On Saturday it? night, yeah. yeah. Well, we went to the garden to start with at about like four o'clock and, you know, we went and found a spot at a bar and it was quite nice there in the garden. I think what they've done with the garden now is quite nice, When it's, certainly when it's not like crazy busy. Walked out of there to try and find some dinner and a few extra beers and it was just, it was it was like at the airport at peak hour. It was just lanes of people walking each way. It was just awful. I went and had dinner with my parents for their birthday Um in on the first weekend and I was hung over for the dinner. <laughs> we were on Peary Street. We went we ended up going to Rundle Street and um I had full on body heaves from mm. the just the masses of people who are all disgusting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yuck. Yep. Anyway, found a nice little seat at Nola and uh had some of their fried chicken so it made me feel better. You found a seat at Nola. Nola's that's decent. Yeah, on the at the bar, which was, you know, not ideal but it was all right. Yeah. Can't complain. Uh about the worst thing, the Thebidin people uh, protesting outside Toyota <laughs> last week about <laughs> about the uh, parklands down there. Just insane, isn't it? And what? why were they – I know why they're at Toyota, but what a weird thing to do. I don't, do you know what makes me laugh about this whole thing is that they've – they've someone has decided that this Emma Dawes or whatever her name is lady is going to be the face of this mm. campaign because she's completely non-threatening and she's obviously a mum. Mm. So, you know, like she's actually perfect for this. Mm. Um but I'm sorry, she just doesn't have time between the labelling of the Kmart food storage containers <laughs> and dusting her house plants yep. and painting furniture. Like, how is she going to have time to Soon run Soon she's going to refinance her home and move to Burnside. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon she watches Marie Kondo? Oh, oh, Marie yeah. Kondo, oh, that's another one for your shit list. <laughs> You're not a fan? I like Marie Kondo. However, she's gone back on everything now that she's had kids and said that don't worry about cleaning your house. Really? Like, how about think about that when I had young kids when you said clean your house and <laughs> get rid of all your stuff. <laughs> now. Now Dan's a minimalist and he hates it. Yeah, yeah now I'm a minimalist. <laughs> I don't have any things. And you're telling me don't clean your house. I could have been a hoarder this whole time. Come on, bro. Yeah, that's, that's Spark not Spark joy elsewhere, mate. Actually, I'm going to put this in here just in case we don't get back to it. But Ash Woodland going to the power. We actually have something prepared for this. Oh, do we? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So do you have the dog axe tinger? Oh. You ready? If you can't kick any goals, you don't have to be a Mollenzilla Ford from the Crows. Dog axe. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I heard that. That's good. I liked it. I didn't realise that um, Ashley is, was a Port fan growing up. So it does make sense oh. that she would put the teal on. Mm. Um, but also... <laughs> yeah, I guess. So was Justine as well. Yeah. All the ones that have gone, actually. Obviously. Hopefully there's no more amongst the troop. Mm. Now, lastly, before you wrap up your segment, uh, one last thing. Why is it so dark in this room? <laughs> Hit the lights, Lauren. <laughs> oh, we got the big light. We put that on. All right, hang on. All right, let's talk about the game that uh, has got us all a little bit up and about for uh, season 2023. Yeah, three. Uh, West Coast game. Anyone got any thoughts? What do we think? My thoughts are we are absolutely shoo-ins for top eight. Most improved team after beating the bottom team last year. (laughs) (laughs) I just love that we are attacking the footy so hard. Like it's just invigorating. Mm. It's definitely. I'm really excited. I really hope we can keep it up. Preseason is one thing, season's another. Hundred percent, and whether we can do it against the good teams is going to be the the big the big killer. But absolutely, yep. it's seeing them the the attack on the ball, just the like that rabid movement out of the the, the midfield was just was a joy to watch. Look, yeah, I think we we need to preface everything we say here. We're playing 
the, the worst team by a country mile last year in a practice match. Uh, so oh, you know, don't forget about North Melbourne. Oh, that, they actually finish above them. No, North were last. Were they? Yeah, right. Okay. Remember but also, we did beat Fremantle in the other game. Yeah, and Even absolutely. though that was a weird game, but yeah. we still we still we grounded out and we won that one. Yeah, I'm not saying we shouldn't be excited about it, but I just yeah we. I think anything can happen. Um, it's it's good to be a little bit excited at this point of the year instead of sort of worrying about what's going to happen a bit. I really feel like the first three games, GWS, Richmond, Port Adelaide, are going to show us exactly yeah. how yeah. the season's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a tough start to the season, yeah. really, overall. And uh, we're going to have to hope that uh, Burgess has got a super fit, I think, because the game style that we are, uh, we're aiming for is going to rely on his uh, ability to keep us up and about for we- the... We look fit. Mm. We so definitely I, look it. Yeah, our injury list is quite short. Very. Um, touch wood. It's just three players. Yep. Um, Worrell, um, Crouch and... Dowling. Dowling. So yep. Dowling would have played anyway. Worrell would have been in, you'd think. Mm. And Crouch was sort of on the fringe. Mm. So, um, yeah. So uh, you think we've got majority of our best 22 out there? Rory back in the midfield? No. Nah. He was, he played so well on the wing. Yeah. I'm loving it. Him and Hinge duo is actually great. And mm. they're both little blondies strolling up and down the wing. Yeah. I'm into it. And yeah. uh, it was just really nice to see him, you know, Sloaney kick a goal, snapped one near the boundary and, oh, yeah, no, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm pro Sloan now. Pro Sloan? Yeah, pro what, Sloan. Does that mean we can't do our Sloan slagging off segment? It's not slagging off. What? Just highlighting the quality products that he um, sponsors. He's got yeah. a new one, actually. Fa- Sharon's with faces on them. I saw he's promoting today. Wait, well, that's what? his uh, th- whole thing. Oh, like, is it his yeah, thing? Yeah, that's his business. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, right. So he he's not really shilling that because it's his own That's fair. He, he can have that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Did anyone notice, I don't know whether it was just because of uh, West Coast and how they were setting up, but did anyone notice Butts making his way down the field a lot more? Yes. Certainly getting into a lot more attacking positions, which could be an interesting watch through the year to see whether that continues. Yep. Good to see. He Another good game from Dragon as well. Dragon. Mm. The nickname's sticking. Is Dragon going to play this week? You'd right? imagine so. I think he gets, mm. comes in um, definitely over Riley, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But well, let's bide our time. That's where I got my 22 wrong then. Peddler. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am down. Peddler's an excitement machine. He's the new excitement machine for yeah. me. I don't think Rankin's the excitement machine. I think it's actually Peddler. Yeah, okay. Also, do you know who I loved? Ben Keys. Yeah. Oh, kick so many goals. <laughs> is that, he's actually practicing goal kicking. <laughs> well, I think he's going to play that sort of – he's certainly going to play that ha- predominantly half-forward role. Yeah, like he Maybe lockdown role that he played so well against Adam Sard last year. Well, that's where he's going to keep his career rolling if he's going to get pushed out of the mids like we suspect. Yeah. I'm um, just sorry, back on Peddler. He only sort of played about 55%. Do you think that was managing him into the season or do you think he's a possible sub or get subbed player for our team? It's potential for sub for potential sure. Potential sub. Um, but I don't know. I think they they obviously like want him to play because they wouldn't have put him in both matches in the mm. A's. Well, I'm pretty keen for him to be a starting player. Yeah. Oh, mm. back here we go. Fantasy again. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> because I think he'd be damaging for the Crows. So. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't see that 200K and you just, your eyes light up. It's 200, <laughs> 213, I think. Oh, is it? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, some negatives though. Uh, Riley O'Brien playing up <laughs> forward. Obviously, uh, he was he was fine in ruck. Don't get me wrong. I think he he played a pretty solid ruck. He did get game. around the ground a bit more. Who was he but, playing against but, um, in that ruck? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It was that, mm. is it Jamison? He's he, is it, yeah, it was Jamison, wasn't well, it? The yeah. fact you don't Maybe know his name, Williams or Jamison, or <laughs> yeah. their second string Nick Nat was yeah. out injured. Yeah, um, but up forward, he offers us absolutely nothing. He's mm. just such a one. Don't, half a dimension player. <laughs> but even if he marks the ball, you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. And he doesn't ever mark it, does he? Ever. Gets he, it to ground. He's the tallest person down there every time the ball comes down there, but he's always a player behind or at least a metre behind where the ball lands. And then if he does get it, it just hits his concrete hands and falls off. <laughs> yeah, no good. Anyway, that's that's For me. a player, he sure looks over. smug in his player profile picture. Yeah. Well, you know why. Very confident <laughs> man. Yeah, of course. He's in leadership. <laughs> <laughs> um, Both me- metaphorically and physically. <laughs> ben wants to get on with it. Luke. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. <laughs> Oof, Jesus. Uh, so I pick, picked out a couple of stats from the game. Oh, yeah. Um, so the t- our top three inside 50 players with six inside 50s each, one was Schoenberg and Barry, 
And the other one was actually Dawson, which I thought was interesting since there's been a bit of concern that he's playing a bit too deep in defence and not you know, getting that entry into our forward 50, but he was equal highest for the team. So I think he's playing a, a role that seems to have a bit of balance where he can still help us getting some score on the board. We did really, like all of our defenders played up the ground, um, which is a little bit new for us. So it should be interesting to see how that pans out. And the other one was a, a, a little bit Rob related. I don't really want to get back to that territory, but um, <laughs> we did win the hitouts forty-four to twenty-two and lost the clearances thirty-seven to thirty-three. So. Are you a bit of a, are you a bit of a Rob sympathizer? Is that what I'm picking up here? No, no, that was that was a negative. Yeah. If you listen, yeah, to the whole I, thing. I think I'm just a balanced um, <laughs> observation on on Rob's where he's at. Yeah, fair. All right, yeah. let's move on. No need to get, no need to get overboard. <laughs> All right. Well, Ben's confident in that answer. What do we do? We, do you want to go into some predictions? Should we do them now? Oh yeah. Yeah. All um, right. So we've we've sort of planned these. We've got some we've got some like headlines, some I guess, or some yes, yeah, sort of some sort of five minutes before the pod. Yeah. Not mentioning any names. Preparing's preparing, Sam. It is. That's true. <laughs> all right. So we've all done our predictions for pre-buy wins. Yep. What do you got, Lauren? Eight. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right. Dan. Oh, you don't oh, want to hear what I've got? Not really. All right. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I reckon. Well, I reckon we. I've tipped the Crows this week because I'm on a higher from the preseason, but I don't think we're going to win mm-hmm. against the Giants at home. I think we might win against the Tigers. First uh, game at Adelaide Oval. I feel like they're going to be amped. The boys are going to hit it hard. We're definitely going to win the showdown. Fuck Port. Frio. <laughs> I reckon we'll get it over Frio after the preseason. Carlton. We're going to win it. So we're going five and zero to start the season. <laughs> <laughs> We're going four and one, Ben. Who did we lose to? Richmond. Giants. Oh, Round one. You said you were going to beat I've, them. No, I said I've tipped them, but in this, I'm saying <laughs> oh, we're probably right. going to okay, lose. Yep, yep, okay. yep. Um, gotcha. But then I, I see us getting three losses on the trot, Hawks, Pies and Cats. Not going to happen because we're playing Hawks in Tassie, so you know what that's like. Jesus. So you're then saying we're going to beat Fremantle and Richmond and lose to the worst team in AFL in the last 10 years. Who, the Hawks? On the pay, on Hawthorne paper. have lost a lot of players. <laughs> yeah, but it's in Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Launceston. It's, it's not over. No, it's all right. We've all got, we've all got our opinions. I said it's Tasmania, Ben. <laughs> we've all got our opinions. But I reckon we'll win against the Saints and I reckon we'll get another one um, on the Dogs. We'll lose against the Lions. We'll win against the Suns and the Eagles. That's what I've got. Okay. That's fair. It De- makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Dan? I'm going slightly different. I actually think we'll win seven games. Yeah, right. I also think we'll lose to GWS this week. Um, and the only differences I had is I think that we'll beat Hawthorne, but we'll lose to the Western Bulldogs and the Suns up in the Gold Coast. What do you got, Ben? I think the Suns are in the Northern Territory, aren't they? Yes. yes they so we'll lose them there instead. Yes. <laughs> Good. I might try, I'm going to try and go to that game. That's when I'm going to be in Darwin, or the week before. Um, so I won't go through every game, but I've basically just said either win, loss, or a 50-50 game. Um, I've got 50-50? I didn't know that was an option. Isn't no, we just treat it as a half. Fence. So I've got six 50-50 games, so that's <laughs> three, three wins. <laughs> I've got, no, there's, uh, there's method to this. I've got 10 50-50 well, games. method to this. I think it's unlikely I'll pick which wins and losses, but I think it's 50-50 for those games. Okay. So This is like, how you need to do it. <laughs> it averages <laughs> out. He's right. <laughs> We both did this this way without uh, without talking on, to each other. Turn it up. Um, <laughs> I said maybe four that I, th- I see us winning, three that we lose. The four I feel is a bit optimistic. I've got GWS, but it's probably a 50-50 game. Um, but I'll go with it as a win and same as Dan, I've arrived at seven. Now, I did mine the right way like Ben did, but I came to a worse result. I've got us winning five. Gee, uh, who knew? The pessimist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, That's the lowest amount of wins. Yeah, I just think we've got a pretty tough start. Like if we if we, we look at the, f- start. It, we I think we, I think the, th- the thing that's hard to look past when you look at them is we're playing a lot of teams that are better than they used to be. There used to be teams that we used to lock in wins against, um, but they're potentially going to be better than us or now this year. Um, so, I think yeah. the only thing in, that got me to fifty fifty in some of those games is that we do have a lot at home, so it, it just yeah. helps us a little bit in that regard. But yeah, yeah. oh look, I hope I'm wrong. For sure. I prefer seven or eight. That sounds lovely. But, yeah, five's my prediction. All right. Wait, before you go on, can you just um, hit the dog act again? I've just written one. If you're sitting on the fence, you can be like seven Ben and not decide who wins. Dog act. (laughs) 
I, th- I think you will find that we were predicting number of wins, not, <laughs> not who was going to win every individual game. Yeah, but it's still dog. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> all right, that's good. Uh, all right, where do we finish, Lauren? Oh, uh, tenth. Dan. Uh, ninth. Ben. <laughs> um, I will go with. Uh, yeah, I'll go with ninth as well. Yeah, I, I think we. I think we might win some towards the back end of the year. So I'm going to go tenth. Uh, I'd love it if we could manage to sneak into the finals. And like the the real optimist in me says that we could definitely shock some teams this year. Yes. I just don't think I can predict it. So, mm. yeah, anyway. I think we'll get close but no cigar. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what we're going to do. And that'll be fine. Yeah. I'm cool with that. I think it'll be For fine. this year I'm cool with that. Like Sensible Crow said today, it's fine if we go backwards as long as we see some improvement overall in the team. It doesn't exactly. matter wins and losses really. Sensible year. crow being sensible. Who would have e- thought? Exactly. That's right. Uh, club champion, Lauren. Or oh, Dawson. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Dawson. Dawson, yeah. I also had Dawson. Yeah, I'm going to go Dawson as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty easy pick, isn't Welcome it? To like, the vanilla pot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was so close last year. Like, I just yeah. feel like this could be his year for sure. Yeah. I think Laird's going to get proper tagged this year too, so mm-hmm. he might have trouble getting the votes. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Laird because obviously he's been our, our main midfield, potentially our, really our only midfielder last year that was so, like super, super consistent. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see whether the other guys stepping up in the midfield means there's even less... Like, do, do teams just let Rory Led go? Who knows? Not sure. He's, he's, his disposal isn't amazing. So, he may just be, he may be one of those players to just let go. Does that mean you put him in your fantasy side, Ben? Uh, it seems a risk, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Leading goal kicker. Uh, well, I think we could probably all agree it's going to be Darcy Fogarty. I think he'll probably kick more than Walker because I don't think Texas is going to play as many games as uh, people think. Yeah. Um, but... My, my smoky for no, leading goal kicker say. is keys. Oh, sure. Ooh. I thought you were going to say McAdam. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'll, Shane, like, Shane doesn't kick that many goals, but no. I think, like, from what keys showed on from the West Coast game, he's he's got a proper chance. Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I think Fogg as well. And, like, if you go back to the start of last year and, and then say Fogg's going to get leading goal kicker this year, you take it for sure. Yeah. So I hope he does. Yep. I hope it's not Tex, even though it would be great for Tex to have another good year. But, yeah, I think Fog. Benjamin. Yeah. Fog again. Yeah. Well, Fog can't really win the Coleman and lose our top goal kicker, can <laughs> he? Right. So, yeah, it has to be him. Uh, the surprise packet. Who? This might not surprise Crows fans. People listening to this podcast are going to obviously know all the players and maybe, you know, it might not be a surprise packet to them if they play well this year. But who do you think is going to be the player that – let's say the player that – AFL three three sixty is going to be talking about after mid season. Uh, I'm going to say Jake Saligo. Yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> I think that's a pretty obvious answer. I actually, um, I've got Peddler listed as well, but it depends how many games he ends up playing. But I actually, I reckon Rochelle might have his little breakout this year if he gets enough games mm. and doesn't get injured. I feel he's put on a bunch of weight. Um, he looks he looks pretty decent. He always looks like he's he's around the contest because he's look he's just waiting for the ball to come out, mm-hmm. and you know we, he we all know how much magic he can work there. So I think after last year he had high expectations on him being the high draft pick, mm-hmm. um, but maybe this year is going to be his year. Yeah, uh, just to add on to Lego, I just <laughs> think, you know he's not it's not surprising for any Crows fan like you said, Sam. Yeah. Um, and I think Vic has already sort of noticed him a little bit. Mm. Um, but he's the absolute steal of that draft, yeah. like without a doubt. So um, I expect him to just dominate this year. Yep. So this is the podcast where we say the same thing four different times. <laughs> four different <laughs> ways. To be fair, we um, didn't we didn't actually discuss any of this, no, did we? Pretty no, no. We and I think externally <laughs> as well, the other player I had is who's looks like he's going in a pretty um, good direction is Hinge. I think he's oh, looking yeah, pretty damaging. Absolutely. So yeah. After can, being delisted, that's pretty good. He yeah. could be keys two point yeah, I actually agree with Hinch. I think he is that he's a player that, that no one really was talking about. He's obviously a little bit older, a little bit older, not much though, is he, uh, than some of the others. But yeah, he's from what we saw in preseason, he could be the one that um, really takes that next step. I think um, yeah, Saligo's an absolutely fair pick, and uh, according to Buckley, nobody knows anybody in our team, so <laughs> yeah. could have said anyone. They're really. all no names. Yeah, all oh, no they've names. heard of Walker and Sloan. 
They have. That's true. Oh, yep. Yeah. Heard of them. Yep, yeah. That's true. No, yep. I think you're right. Hinge is definitely a good pick. Yeah. All right. Now, we've got, a, we've got some league-wide ones as well. Yeah. So, uh, Premier slash runner-up. Oh, shit. I didn't do the runner-up. Um, I think I said it last year, but I'm going to say it again. Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's it just probably you won't. really want it to happen. Yeah, I prob- it probably won't happen. I just really don't want Geelong to get another one yeah, back to back. Yeah. Uh, runner up, Geelong. <laughs> <laughs> um, as much as I want to write Geelong off, it's hard to, but I don't see them making another grand final this year. I think um, they'll be in a prelim, but I think it'll be Brisbane to win it against Melbourne. Yep. Uh, for a bit of variety, Brisbane beating Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to say Frio. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. First gonna, one. Yeah. What? I'm going to say Frio beats Brisbane in the grand final just to really annoy Victorian fans. That's a bit of a Matt Crouch call, that is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll replay this at the end of the year. Okay. No. Uh, what else we got? Wooden Spoon. This, oh, it's got to be, be the Weagles. Easy, this is. You you're reckon? Wrong. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> no, you're wrong, Lauren. Oh, I'm wrong? Yeah. <laughs> is it North Melbourne? <laughs> no. No, he thinks it's Hawks. Yeah. I actually think Gold Coast. We're going to go backwards. Oh wow! Mm. Gold That's Coast a big with call. a spoon. Okay. That's a big and unfortunate <laughs> call for the Gold Coast. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Stewie Jew won't be happy. Um, yeah, I did have Hawthorne until I found out they were beating us down in Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> I just they still might get the spoon, Ben. <laughs> they could. I just can't see how Hawthorne win games. Like they will, but what happened? Are they that they bad let, already? They were already shit, and they lost half their team. Didn't lose. They gave it away. Yeah, they Sam Mitchell's gone full rebuild. Full rebuild. They got rid oh. of Mitchell, O'Meara. Um, I'm clueless. Like, not, we, funnily enough, none of us have mentioned North, but which you know, they're going to be as shit as well. But mm. but they got Clarko now. <laughs> yeah. And nothing's wrong with Clarko, right? No, no Clarko's fine. <laughs> Actually, do you see that popped up again? So yeah. they haven't completely swept it under. It's still ongoing. Oh, I've heard brought it's it back up. more yeah. complicated than the Essendon doping saga now. Yeah, well, it should be. They said that it might last and it might not get any results until the end of the year. Seems like they're not doing so much to get those. Sneak results. one season with Clarkson in yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, that's it. Hope everyone forgets about mm. them. Well, if the North year. are still poor, they can probably just ditch Clarko. Yeah, that's right. He's yeah. not the savior. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where are our friends going to finish? Lucky thirteenth. <laughs> I have them finishing just below the Crows at tenth. <laughs> nice. And that's why I also said ninth for the Crows because I had Port at tenth. I think they'll make the finals, so I'm going to go seventh. I yeah, I don't, no. oh, I don't want them to, but they won't. They should. I just can't see it this time. I don't see the midfield they've got to get them there. How good would it be if they go on a seven and zero run at the start of the year, or zero and seven? I should say. <laughs> How good! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Kenny will be gone by the bye. Oh yes, we are back with another team's Nuff for the first time this year. Joining us tonight is an acclaimed Australian actor who has starred alongside some of the nation's biggest biggest and best, including Rachel Griffiths and Anthony, Anthony LaPaglia. He played political prisoner Julian Assange in The Underground, the Julian Assange story drama, in excess legend Kirk Pengilly in Never Tear Us Apart, and he's about to take on his biggest role yet as Shane Warne in the miniseries Warney. He acts and he loves footy, specifically the Giants, and he's a giant Giants fan. He is Alex Williams. Welcome, Alex. G'day, guys. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for joining us, Alex. Um, I don't know if you know, but we have such a hard time getting GWS supporters. <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you? Where are you all? Um, do you, I know you exist, but where are the others? Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're few and far between at the moment, but um, look, it's growing. I'm meeting a few more. It's weird when you see um, other Giant supporters in, in the wild, you know, with a Giants cap or whatever. You, you do get that familiar little nod, though. Sense um, of camaraderie, Which is yeah. a nice little, like, you know, he knows, you know. Yeah. So that's, um, that, that is a nice little feeling. But it is, it's, it's growing out there. We just don't have a lot of... Um, don't have a lot of um, 
you know, sort of notable Australians that are that are following the club yet that aren't just cricketers, basically, at yeah. this point. So um, that's how I've managed to rise up the ranks to uh, ambassador because otherwise <laughs> I think I would have been in trouble. Love it. I'm sure you'll get there eventually. Uh, now, before we kick off with the footy, we do just want to talk a little bit about your acting because you've played some pretty incredible roles and you've got a, an amazing one coming up. Uh, tell us uh, what it's like to be an actor in Australia. Yeah, I mean, like, I've been doing it, um, you know, since I was about 20. I, I studied over in, in in WA and then basically moved to Sydney the year that the, the Giants started, which is which is why I'm a Giants um, fan. New start, new team. That was kind of the ethos um, or that the idea sense. of it. So, um, you know, being an actor in Australia, look, it's 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 great. Um, it's obviously competitive, I think, it, but that's being an actor pretty much uh, anywhere in the world. So... Look, it's something that I've always loved and um, I still love doing it. It has its ups and downs like like kind of any career. But, um, you know, I seem to have um, carved out a niche of playing real people. I think this is my sixth or seventh biopic. So, yeah, um, yeah, I've, I've sort of gotten through them a bit. It's a weird speciality to have, but um, look, I'm happy for it. It really is. Now, um, I do want to touch on that a little bit because obviously you've played some pretty hectic names like Julian Assange. Like that was one of your first major roles, wasn't it? Yeah, that was my first. That was my first major role straight out of drama school. So that was, um, yeah, that was sort of um, straight into the thick of it. Um, that was an amazing experience. Uh, you know, getting to play someone like Julian and and you know meeting um, the WikiLeaks party and 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 getting thrown into that whole world of um, politics. The, the film was actually um, set in the, the late eighties, so you know it was it was me typing on a Commodore sixty four, which I'd never <laughs> never seen before. But um, it was a great experience and, and great people. And then In Excess was also another fantastic yeah, I was, one. I was going to say but, nothing surely tops playing Kirk Pengilly and learning the saxophone solos. <laughs> Yeah, you know, popping those glasses on, it's a good feeling. Still got them somewhere, so yeah, yeah so no, it's, our- a, it's a good feeling. And he's a lovely guy. That, that was the great thing about that experience was, um, you know, we got to meet the band um, and, you know, they helped – uh, teach us guitar, you know, in, in the lead up and, and, and they were involved and all the music was there. So yeah, that, that series had a really good energy behind it. So that was, that was a great one. That's so Getting cool. hunted by Ivan Milat was less enjoyable. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know. uh, just quickly on the Kirk Bengilly thing and we're in, I'm only touching on this because In Excess is one of my favorite bands, but um, the one thing I read about that role was that you weren't allowed to wear his actual glasses. Because he's famous oh, for the glasses. No, well, no, well, no. I mean, but <laughs> he didn't give them up to me, you. Uh, <laughs> Not even a pair. <laughs> he didn't give up a pair for you for the role. Come no, on, Kirk. he didn't. I mean, he brought in um, some of his guitars. Um, so we cool. were playing their actual guitars, which was um, for some of it, which is which was really cool. Until um, Kirk saw me playing it <laughs> and then he tried, he tried tried to take it back off me. <laughs> <laughs> Love, Love it. it. All right. Well, let's get into the footy chat, boys. Go for it. Yeah, so Alex, the AFL fixture makers have done you a solid this year of playing you into form from round one um, instead of waiting till mid-season for the Crows matchup. Uh, why do the Orange team seem to have the wood over our Crows? What's the secret? Well, we didn't initially. You guys <laughs> smashed us for for years, but I think you guys were one of the last teams we managed to beat. Yeah, I heard um, um, Tom Lynch might have kicked 10 goals one time. <laughs> <laughs> We don't talk about those days. Uh, we don't talk about those early days where sitting out at Giant Stadium getting absolutely warped. But, um, yeah, the last few years we've sort of come out and found something against you guys. I'm not sure quite what that is. Um, I think it'll be interesting this, this year because we, we have a vastly different game plan. Um, you know, with, with Kingsley coming in, it, it's going to be a lot more run and gun, a lot more tsunami. So we could get turned around a little bit more. So it'll be interesting. I think we, we beat you guys by a lot even last year and we, we were terrible. So not yeah, sure. Was, yeah. 59 <laughs> points. That yeah, we know, 59 <laughs> points. That was yeah, a terrible wow. game to watch. Yeah. And we, we, I think we won like four games last year. So yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty, uh, that's a, that's a rough trot for you guys. I but we, I think it's going to, it's a pretty salivating matchup. I think it's two teams kind of on the rise. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I'm glad it's it's in Sydney. Um, you know, round one, a giant stadium. We we play quite well there. We don't get to play there very often, especially early in the year, uh, because the, the the shows out here, the Easter show, and it sort of destroys our stadium for a bit and turns it into a place where people are running around on horses. Um, so we end up playing in Canberra. So getting to play at Giant Stadium is 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 a is a big difference for us because we we play quite well there. 
And and you sort of mentioned, yeah, so just the four wins, finishing 17th last year, which just doesn't seem right. You don't seem like a 17th sort of a team. Um, do you think with the new coach, new game plan, do you, do you see a pretty big bounce this year? Were we, seven, were we 16th or 17th? 17th, because sure. um, you had pick two, trade yeah, up, wow. pick one. Um, yeah, I probably do. Look, I think we underperformed last year. I think a big part of it that was that, you know, I think we were one in five in the first six weeks or one in four in, in five. And, and we just didn't rebound at all. Like your season's dead. Um, you played one game at home in, in six weeks. I think it was because our first one was at a call because they tried to sell it basically to get Swans fans there. Um, I think this year we, our first five games are, are much easier. Um, our draws easier. Uh, we've got Toby Green for the first five weeks, which probably <laughs> helps. I'm not sure if we'll have him after that. But, um, but yeah, I think like the, the, the energy around the club has been, has been really good. I, I went along to the um, season launch the other day. And yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a buzz going along. There's, a, there's a, a really new game plan. We've got a lot of young guys coming through. Yeah, we've lost some talent. We lose talent every year, so I'm kind of used to that. But with, you know, Toronto and Hopper going out, it just means that our midfield's a little more consolidated and we don't have to play midfielders as, as forwards anymore. We, we've, we've brought in a couple of forwards and, um, you know, we'll, we'll just see, we'll see how we go. But I'm, I'm expecting a big rebound and a big year from Tom Green. Yeah, and I've just uh, mentally fact checked myself. I think you're right. It was 16th, I think. We, I don't think. Yeah, because I think we had to go from pick three to pick one. I don't think it could have been worse um, than West Coast and North Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been rough. Yeah. Um, you kind of answered my question. Um, you, you've, d- you've done very well predicting our questions here. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorrento, Hopper, and to a, maybe a lesser extent, Tanner Braun, um, are, you, are you worried about them leaving the side? Is that going to leave a massive hole, or do you think it might maybe free up? midfield spots for some other players, maybe a bit more dedicated? Oh, look, I have a personal vendetta against Tanner Bruin um, <laughs> now. Yeah. Um, you know, he when coming in, I, I was really high on him um, mm-hmm. and he just wouldn't sign the client. And you could just, you know, from day dot, you got that, um, you got that look on his face and I, you, you just kind of knew he was going. Um, but to do two years, which isn't even an arts degree, you know, in another city <laughs> and, and to bail back to Geelong and, um, back to your friends from high school. I, I, look, I was just like, nah, it's, it's a little soft. But, um, yep. yeah, I, I think, as I said before, it's sort of more about list balance. You know, we, we were playing Taranto and Cornelio forward because you had to fit you had to fit Hopper in. They wanted to see what Bruin could do before they, you know, they lost him. Um, and so, you know, we, we've brought in Bedford, who has done a massive hammy, so he won't play. But um, they've really... The, the big kind of change this year is it seems like what Kingsley has done has brought in, um, you know, real spe- specificity. <laughs> I shouldn't have tried to <laughs> say that word. But basically, like, just everyone knows their role now. You're not getting switched. Perryman's not going as a tagger, midfield, half back, half forward, you know, depending on the depending on the week. They're not swinging the magnets. They're going, these are your roles in preseason. And then they're just going, this is how we're going to play. Um, so, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. The, the, the Suns game, you know, the preseason, which you can't take a lot out of, but it looked good. Um, it looked really enjoyable to watch. And um, we scored freely, which was the big problem last year. So, yeah, um, I think it's almost a good thing to lose to lose some of those midfielders. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we all sort of sat here and nodded at each other when you were talking about Tanner Bruin before because we've uh, <laughs> we've definitely been through that. The uh, the slightly what a de- soft. <laughs> <laughs> the depressed. I can't the depressed do that. If I ever met him in person, he's going. Like, you, you've got a vendetta. Yeah, yes, the I very do. the very sad looking draftee on draft night. And yeah. It's just like oh god, yeah. you just know you're going to leave in a couple of years. So yeah. Sometimes they sleep in Guernseys and then they still come home. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly right. At least we got two years out of him. Yeah, that's true. I just wanted to also commend you. Uh, uh, we I had a look through your social, uh, your Twitter account earlier in the week when we knew you were coming on, and uh, very impressed with your dedication out at training sessions. And uh, yeah, we've we've had some guests on here who are who are fans, but I think you are your next level, which is uh, really prop good enough. to see. Prop enough, we like yeah, it. Yeah, prop prop enough areas for me. <laughs> I, you know, like as I said, I moved over from Perth uh, when the Giants started, and there was there was no one. And I think. You know, they invited me, you know, out to a few games and put me in some nice seats um, a couple of times, basically because I was the only one on Twitter that was <laughs> Are you know, on the way to number had one. a blue tick, you know. On the way and, to number um, one ticket holder, Alex? 
don't jinx it. I mean, don't, <laughs> totally don't. Like, well, this, this could help. Um, <laughs> look, it, it, it's a campaign. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been um, I've been doing a bit of social media work for for the Giants, doing a, a little um, uh, video post post wins called the One Eye Giant, which is basically a, a meme field joke review of 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 our wins so oh, i've um, seen that actually i reckon yeah i'll i'll send it i'll send it through to you guys so yeah, um, we'll put a link yeah, in our it, notes yeah yeah do it yeah oh that's so good yeah so that. yes enough areas big enough areas love you it. know do you get every any, club needs them do you get any special perks from the club being in a position like you are uh yeah oh look yeah they you know they they they, they take care of me they look up to you <laughs> that's good <laughs> So <laughs> next okay. season, uh, when we play the Giants in Sydney, you're going to invite us over for the hat, corporate box. You know? uh... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Every time you guys come out to Western Sydney, um, the, the, the orange carpet will be rolled out. Oh, Excellent. <laughs> well, we understand. I mean, the, the Crows are happy for us to buy memberships. So <laughs> <laughs> we know that. We understand. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I do. Um, I, they do give me a... A, a, a nice amount of tickets, but I, I still do buy my buy my membership as well yeah, because it's one of those things where you go, yeah, it is an expansion club, um, and you know we don't have heaps heaps of members. Although it's been it was thirty thousand last year, so um, you, you, you still want to be counted and, and financially support you know what what you're supporting. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, you you want to do it. All right, we just got a quick little uh, stinger here for our uh, next segment, and uh, Ben will ask you the question. Yes! Oh, whoops, that was the wrong one. That's the short one. <laughs> Hang on a second. I knew you were going to do right. that. Right. No. The kick to Dennis. Right so we're him. right behind him, and the Carlton fans are right behind him. Once, twice, three times. Oh, look at that. Yes! <laughs> He's the master blaster. That was okay, bad. so that commentary was, yes, one young Dennis Armfield having a tear against um, the Crows. One game, his one good game for his career. So basically <laughs> what what we're looking for is a player who you think generally, you know, a little bit average, not doesn't do amazing for you, but coming up against the Crows is going to have a blinder. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, an interesting question and I came to a very quick answer, which is um, Jake Riccardi. Oh, now, I like that one. <laughs> now, Jake Riccardi is one of those players that if you go a little early, you're watching the knee four or the VFL as it is now. If you're watching the VFL, you'll see him kick seven, ten goals, won't miss, takes every mark, absolute jet. Then, you know, goes up to the AFL, goes up to that level, bright lights. Oh, God, they're in his eyes. You know, <laughs> I can't see where the goals are. He, he's sort of dropping everything. He's, he's up on the wing. He's, he's all over the place. But he's 23 now, so he's not old for a key position player. He's, he's mm-hmm. still young. And I just feel like he's one of those guys, especially with Himmelberg back in the forward line, Hogan is going gonna, is gonna to draw, you know, probably your number one defender. And Jake Riccardi is just, you know, that third tall that I think can get off the leash. And um, especially with our faster sort of midfield and, and running, I think he could do some damage. He's a big kick and he's usually pretty accurate. Um, as the as the VFL stats will tell you, um, so so I reckon Jake Riccardi, you know, the third the third tall might just pull out a big five to six goals against Ooh. you guys. Wow, I, I like I like having a well thought out um, field yeah, nominee. That was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm now, a fan of that. Before we wrap up, Alex, we just need to get your tip for this week. Do you think GWS can knock the Crows off? Um. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. Goes without um, saying. That. Um, I actually think, yeah, I, it's interesting. I've sort of read it, you know, bits and pieces around, around as you know, every preseason it gets really excited. And, and I started, you know, looking at your forward line and going, ah, oh, Rankin, Rochelle, geez, you know, you got Fogarty there. Who's going to take Fog? Who's going to take Tex? Where's Taylor going to absolutely put a blanket over? And I was going, okay, the forward line. Crazy, crazy good. Really talented. Midfield, I was going, oh, I reckon we've got you there. And our back line, I think, is, is probably um, is better than yours. So I was like, I think we'll beat you by about 100 points. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, do think we'll, I do think we'll get it. I think it's a, it's a pretty even, a pretty even matchup for two teams who are kind of rebounding and, and trying to get back, um, you know, maybe not in the eight, but close. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to tip us cause it's, it's at home. 
Do you yeah. know who uh, Alex reminds me of? Who? Me. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Alex Williams. One eyed, the one-eyed giant. Yeah, yeah that's right. I love it. The one-eyed giant. Well, that's what we're going to refer to you as from now on. So, Alex, um, thank you so much for coming on to Here We Crow tonight. Um, you're now uh, one of the friends of the pod, and uh, we wish you all the best of luck with the GWS season and the release of Warney. Um, oh, I can't wait to see your Shane Warne. That's, that's so right. huge. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be, be a lot huge. of fun. Hey, I've got to give a little shout. Shout out um, to my friend Bisk on Twitter, who um, oh, yeah. was, is a big fan of you guys. Yeah, yeah uh, we like Bisk. And, and made a yeah. mine up here in Sydney. So he's coming out to the game at Giant Stadium on, on, on Sunday. Oh, so. a bit nice of rivalry. One. Friendships could end. Nice one. Exactly. <laughs> Love yeah. it. We'll yeah. tag yeah. Bisk in the post. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot of smack talk <laughs> the <late Monday laughs> during the last week. Awesome. Thanks so much, Alex. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Cheers. Alex. Cheers. Bye. Marjorie. Oh, that is the mark of the year. There's been a bit of discussion on the uh, podcast this week about what our team's going to look like. So we thought we'd just compare it to the team that finished last year just to make it a little bit more like obvious, I guess, in our minds on who's out and who's in for round one compared to round, what, 23 or whatever it would have been last year. So Ben's done some uh, done some lists. What do we got? Um, so in terms of players who lined up against Port Adelaide and did it poorly last year, um, <laughs> heading out it looks like McHenry, Murphy, potentially Chase Jones, Worrell with injury, Rowe's going to struggle for a game and <laughs> Phil Thorpe looks like he's just on the outer at the moment. Yeah, and you've paired them up with who's likely to yeah, come in so along those positions. In for that, it looks like, well, obviously Rankin will come in. Peddler's looking good. Sloan looks like he's back from injury. Uh, for the injury for Worrell, looks like Michelini's going to get a game. Rochelle was out injured at that stage, so he comes in for Rowe. And it looks like Himmelberg for Thilthorpe. When you see those names next to each other, I know we're not a visual podcast, uh, which makes this a little bit difficult, but there is some fairly significant jumps in quality along a lot of those lines there isn't there it's one of the reasons i think we're feeling fairly positive about the year that um if we're feeling like we've got a team that doesn't have the uh triplet of sam's favorite players um (laughs) how good (laughs) look at that look at that list it's you, all you, three you, of them. In again, the this is not a visual podcast. Uh, <laughs> Sam is <laughs> celebrating. You've got to wonder why Sam's only gone with five wins. Really, if there was, yeah, if true. Rob was in that out section, that would just be. I would be tipping us for the eight. I reckon. That, only that we had be. brought in Brody Graham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you guys got anything to add to that? No. No, uh, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is really good to see that. Um, you know, after the fans literally. Screaming about it every single week of last year, that the club seems to have evolved to the point where those players aren't in the starting twenty-two. So I think we'll see Jones this year. Yeah, at times, and I'm sure McHenry will get games. I just yeah. want to point out that there's no McAdam on that list um, because he was injured at the end of the year. Was so he? Yep. So uh, he's not even on there. It was, it was a bit of a rapid sort of a um, <laughs> process. It was a, it was, a l- it was a rapid look, <laughs> Lauren. Uh, but uh, yes, you're right. McAdam. I think it's. I think we can like all say that like the the squad is strong. Yeah, it's really hard to pick the twenty two. Yeah. How good? Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good way. It is a good thing. It's so possibly good. that would be McAdam coming in if Miller doesn't get up. Yeah, Miller out, McAdam in. I feel like this whole conversation is a good segue into our next segment. <laughs> so we all think our squad looks pretty good. But one man who doesn't think our squad is up to scratch is Bryce Gibbs, <laughs> former Adelaide Crow. Bryce Gibbs, maybe his heart was never in the Adelaide Crows. Maybe that's why he can't see our strategic vision, <laughs> the vision that we rolled out through Tim Silvers yep. in the last couple of weeks, that we will return to premiership glory within the next five years. Now, what's wrong with having a vision and aiming for a grand final and selling hope to the fans and having a squad that uh, may build on that? Mm. Um Bryce thinks that we're more likely to not make finals in the next five years and to win one. Mm. Not make finals at all. Five years and we're not going to make finals. Not going to make finals. And 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 then win a grand final was was the way he phrased it. And a few quotes um, from the man that I think are worth um, repeating. Hashtag baggers. Uh, The Crows. (laughs) uh, He didn't say that. I just added that in. (laughs) The Crows fans will probably come at me and think I'm a little bit flat from my personal dealings. 
person, what personal dealings are you talking about? Are mm. they crows related or the gambling? Gambling. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's <laughs> not the case. Alleged gambling. Um, well, and then possibly he, responsibly, we don't know. <laughs> and then he's called out and said that our best players are still our oldest players. So Tex and Rory. Um, and then his name's Brody Smith. Is towards the end, and then this my favorite quote: "Rory Laird is getting older by the year." No shit, <laughs> he's not Benjamin Button. Yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> so we, we have Bryce, a really serious issue in this country of just allowing ex-sports people just to then turn into commentators by default without yeah. there being any proper vetting process. They should at least have to go do a degree in media yeah. before they jump on. Look, any I'm microphone. sure Bryce, like we did. <laughs> I've done one. Yeah. I have done one. So oh. I'm allowed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Bryce can string two sentences together, but we don't want to hear them. We're, right? not getting pa- we're not getting paid to do this, I guess. So unlike him, can people just stop right. asking for his opinion on the crows? Like he can talk about other things. He's got his. He's got a show on SEN. Yeah, Why? he's on Saturday mornings, isn't he? We don't need another person talking out their ass about the crows. Well, yeah. that's what Kane's for. And now Kane has diverted his attention to everything Jason Horn Francis and Taron yeah. Thomas. Yeah, coming out today and saying that um, allegedly. Taron Thomas was Jason Horn Francis' mentor last year. <laughs> he also said that Jason Horn Francis is the next Wayne Carey. Mm. I don't know he, if that's no, a good no, thing, he said, he said he's he's North's <laughs> most talented player since Wayne Carey. That's Hello, pretty Brent much Harvey. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh boy. Yeah. So right. we digress. That's Kane. We, He'll be back at some point this year when he comes back onto the Crows. But yeah. Um, he just but, wanted, he didn't want to disagree with Nathan Buckley. Let's be real. He yeah. he you know Nathan Buckley would stop stomp his head. Yeah, that's right. But for like, now, I'll disagree. It's the negative um the negative words of Bryce Gibbs that we've got to uh yeah get us yeah. Into let's start the Gibbsy shut up campaign. Yeah, I think so. Did we have a theme song Who, for that one? We do. We, we do. Blues. It's going to be we'll, on later. I'm going to put and it in. I, and you're putting it in post. Yeah. Please. For those who <laughs> would like to know, um, <laughs> smooth as, Sam, we, Sam. as we say in the biz. <laughs> Us um, medially trained um, <laughs> individuals. I'll Sam just, did veto. I'll sign your degrees for you. <laughs> Before we move on to the next um, bit, Sam did veto our name of who gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of swearing in the But title. I finished the segment with who gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll go back to where we were supposed to go, which is our predictions for the game coming up. Uh, what do you got? Dan, give us something. Oh, no, give us something, Ben. Come oh. on. You got some stats? Um, oh, not a heap, but um, <laughs> basically, we've, we've talked a fair bit with our um, enough Asses. about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we are rusty, are we still? No. So, <laughs> no, with, with our enough it's about um, the fact that they've lost some key players, but they had a, a fair bit in like reserve, in, particularly in their midfield. So, um, they're a bit of a mystery team, really. You've got the new coach in Pipes Kingsley. Um, <laughs> Uh, they were a team that finished so low last year, but they really shouldn't have been that low. So it just feels like a team that didn't have a coach last year. And they've had the wood on us recently. Um, being that game as, was awful last yeah. year. And you think about last year. So round seven last year, we were coming off a hot streak. We'd just beaten the Bulldogs in Ballarat um, after beating Richmond at home. And a couple of weeks before we beat Port in a showdown. We were favourites going into the game and we didn't cope with that tag well. Yeah, that Why was are terrible. we reliving this? So that was awful, the that game. I was even watching it and I'm scarred. Yeah. We've had a hot pre-season. We've smashed the might of West Coast. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of positive talk. There's Every player is talking finals. Schoenberg last week, we didn't mention the word finals and he's, <laughs> I hope we can get to finals for you guys. <laughs> um, so there is a lot of positivity. I just hope we're more switched on than we were last year and a bit more mature and I, I, I'd Hope that we are. I think we've got more experience. But there is the danger of us, like the Crows are known to do, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. It's okay, though, because Ned McHenry won't be playing and he yeah. won't give away a bunch of frees and miss goals. Yeah, so it'd be fine, it. right? And we're also not favourites, so that's good. So having said that, I'm tipping us by 18. Ooh. Ooh. Righto. Dan, what do you got? I reckon we're going to show a lot of heart, um, which is something we've lacked for a few years, and I think that we will go down by one goal. It will be close. Lauren. This is the hardest tip I've ever had to make. Oh, no. Because my head says we are going to lose this game. Yeah. Because oh, we're going to have – to give you a 50-50 if you, if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you need. My head says we're going to lose this game because um, we're going to have round one heebie-jeebies. Yeah. We played well in the preseason, but 
we're not playing at home for the first time in a couple of years in round one. We've played round, uh, round one at home the last couple of years. I feel like, I don't know. I just don't know where the boys' heads will be at. They're travelling a lot. They haven't been at home really because they've been in Perth this whole time and now they're going to Sydney. Mm-hmm. Could shake them up a little bit. But my heart says, like what Dan said, they're going to come in with bravado. I reckon they might cinch it by two points. Oof. Yeah, I, I agree with Dan. I'm going to go with 10 points, but I think it will it will be close, but we will get done. Midfield will be where it's won. I think we're at the point where we'll accept honourable losses now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I look, I just, like, GWS, yeah, okay, they finished terribly last year, but like like we've mentioned a few times in this pod, they're not a they're not a 16th team, are they, on paper? Yeah. They were, they're a way better team than that. And if they see that jump back to where they should be, with a new coach and a bit of a new system, then um, realistically they could tear us apart. Really, but technically, with the, with their outs um, for this year, they should be worse than a sixteenth team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're just not going to be, are they? No, no you can't that, see it. And I think you know that that could be a bit of getting rid of some bag bad eggs who wanted to go back to Victoria was sitting around. You know, they've got so much talent in that team. Mm. Yeah. So anyway. That's all we got to say. Oh, well, look, I'm just excited that footy is back. Yeah. I'm pretty annoyed that we have to wait until Sunday to see the Crows play. Yeah. yeah Only two more sleeps until footy, though. Crap. Richmond, Richmond and Carlton. Oh, that Thursday old night. game. Yawn fest. No, um, I'll be definitely watching. It'll be good. Great. It'll be fun. Anyway. What else? Out of bounds on the full. Did anyone say anything to us on Twitter? Social media. They did say some stuff. Um, obviously, we haven't kicked off officially. So, uh, you know, there's a few few responses. Uh, all right, what we got? Um, 1990 Crow. Disappointed the club has folded to allowed minority regarding oval size at Thebby. The master plan was less impact to trees than 2018 council, which these whinges ticked off. <laughs> um Look, we've talked about this briefly. Uh, Quirky has also got a comment yeah, around that. Opinion. Um, unpopular opinion. I don't think it's that bad that the Crows are working with residents to come up with a facility that retains as much as possible of the existing trees in the area. Now, I'm I'm kind of with Quirky. Like, I actually don't think it matters that much if we have an MCG size oval. Mm. I don't think it really matters that much because, I mean, realistically – we don't play on the MCG that often. Yep. We won't be using that training ground that often either. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not that it's not that big a deal. Um, and, but it's, and it's within what was it, eleven or twelve meters, according to Crowcast, I think. Yeah, or yeah. like so length. It, it'll be, I think, similar length, but not as. Um, oh, not as wide. wide. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Eleven meters w- uh, thinner. And yep. Nuz did say in his podcast this week that you know the crows could have something up their sleeve later on when it's actually built mm. and the you know the south road plans are changing all the time so yeah they could end up extending the Thebben oval to be mcg size ground we just don't know i know jack's a big crowcast fan i've seen him um, in the uh, in the comment sections there but um yeah i implore anybody who really does want to like you know, go through this. Um, crowcast generally spend like 15 20 minutes on it watch it on youtube he's got some like Literal diagram, so he shows the sizes of the grounds. So you got you can make up your own opinion from that. Well, uh, Razor actually uh, sent us a tweet as well about it, um, and he's obviously not listening to Crowcast. So yeah, uh, he said uh, <laughs> AFC hasn't dug a hole or driven a single nail yet on new facilities, and people are losing their shit over the size of the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> not well, wrong. at least we know it's going to be a great lawn, Razor. It will be. Uh, Josh has sent us a tweet. Hey, mm. Josh. He says, "I just want to say we are going to win the flag this year." Yes, <laughs> I hope he's right. <laughs> Josh, nice. we all have the same positivity, except Sam. Uh, <laughs> also, Jack said, time for club to start showing next steps. Scrubbers like Murphy, McHenry and Jones out of the side replaced with more talented players. And I think that is exactly what's happening. And yep. Chris Fitz uh, from Melbourne agrees. Yep. Uh, Bozza on uh, Instagram. After all the positive talk and two trial game wins, comes the inevitable poor performance versus the Orange team. Orange team by thirteen. Well, let, we've actually got a another voice memo from Bozza, so he can tell us what he really thinks. And play that now. We did have his round. He, we had his round one selections. Um, the last, like the first episode oh, for yeah. the preseason, but. Let's see if he's updated them since. Right. Good evening, people. Hopefully this recording is a little bit better. Sorry I can't jump on live. Just got a few things happening with 
children, family, etc. Um, got my team for round one. Um, not many surprises with these selections, but we'll see how we go. Um, I've got the back six of Hinge, Butts, Murray, Dawson, Dude, and Miller. Center line of Sloan, Laird, Saligo. Half forward line of Rochelle, Tex, Peddler. Full forward line of Rankin, Fogg, and McAdam. Um, I've got O'Brien. Obviously, he's going to be in the team at the start of the year, but he's really going to have to do some better things to keep his spot. So I reckon <laughs> Diplomatic three games <laughs> max for him. Um, finishing off with Barry and Keys in the middle. Um, on the bench, I've got Smith, Schoenberg, and Himmelberg, and Max, whatever his last name is, <laughs> over in the Orange Country. Um, and the sub will be Thilthorpe this Ooh. week. So maybe they could swap around with Max, depending on whether they want to debut him over there or not. So that's about it um, for this week, and uh, I'll... Speak to you next week. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Bozza. Love awesome. it, Bozza. Thanks, Bozza. Pretty uh, safe selections there from Boz. Any uh, notable admissions? Yeah, there? I think um, there were... Parnell? A, yeah, Parnell. I think Paddy Parnell probably gets a, a Guernsey. Um, I had Lockie Shoal, which I don't think will play. No. Um, who didn't he have in his mid? His, oh, I had Ben Keys in the forward line instead of in the mids. Yeah. Did he have Sloan? Yep. Yeah, was he in the back line? Yeah, I must have missed that. No, he was in the mids. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, right. Did he? Yeah, okay. Interesting. Mm. Well, Thanks, thanks for listening. Oh, I was trying. <laughs> and I, yeah. I think maybe someone like a Hamill might be our sub more than Phil Thorpe. Yeah. Yep, probably right there. But overall, audio quality tip top this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. lots better. <laughs> Definitely um, better, better, not being Just suffocated. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing off Instagram as well. We did have a um, Armfield nomination from Jack as well. He put Brett Daniels, which I actually oh, think that's a good one. is a great one. Yeah. Um, he is one of those players that just bobs up and has like one or two good games a year. So. Small forwards are prime Dennis Armfield territory, aren't they? So, they really are. I yeah. think Dennis Armfield was a small forward. Well, yeah. I think the player has done it to us year on year recently as been Jesse Hogan, really. Yeah. He doesn't do – he hasn't been the player that everyone thought he'd be, but he is when he plays us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Roscoe, the boss, and Coes. <laughs> Does he, do you people know him? No. No? Okay. Who that? He's a, he's a fan, obviously. Uh, he wrote from – I think he means Crom. Beat Thebby by 144 points and get the MCG oval. Okay. <laughs> All I'm going to say to that is hashtag no crumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we got Kate. Kate's back. Hey, Welcome Kate. Back, Kate. We'll get Kate in at some point this year. Fresh from course. Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, Kate was uh, yeah at Weird Al. Um, pass mark for the Crow Boys in 2023. Mine is finished ninth or above and win one showdown. We uh, we went through our predictions earlier on, so you'll definitely, uh, you definitely get our opinions there. Uh, but there was a few of us that said ninth, wasn't there? Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, will Crouch stay injury free long enough to finally prove he needs to go? <laughs> Already not. <laughs> Early signs say no. <laughs> That's it's not looking comment. positive. No. No. But did you see? Um, I was surprised. I knew it was only, you know, a fairly minor yeah, two break, weeks, but two weeks. Yeah. So he's actually less than Seems what they're predicting with Worrell. Yeah. So can't catch yeah. a break, poor Maddie. No. We can. <laughs> that's terrible exactly. that's exactly what he caught <laughs> oh do we have anything on facebook did anyone no nah, we never get anything on facebook <laughs> jetty might be on there hey jetty no nah, she didn't <laughs> no, nothing's on there no nah, no jetty no nah, nothing all right well uh jetty are we done is that it i think that's it are we done for Let's talk about the beer. season one no, season two, <laughs> episode one. <laughs> Might cut Wake that out, Sam. thankfully. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the beer. So Mephisto Stout, what do people think? Yum. Yeah. Liked it? It was good, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty harsh when I first sipped it and then um, yeah, got into it. And I, I find it hard to believe it's as low alcohol content as what it says it is. Yeah, there's a, there's a thickness there, isn't it, that sort yeah. of maybe fools you into thinking that um, it might be heavier than it is. Mm. But um, yeah, it's quite drinkable, really. My face isn't fuzzy, so I think we're good. <laughs> You could drive home. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> ben, thoughts? Yeah, good. You like stout? I do. Yeah. Possibly the, the room's a bit clammier than I'd like for a stout. But. Yeah, it is a bit clammy in here. We need this stupid weather to go away. Bring on winter, I say. 
Oh, it's going to be freezing in this room in winter. <laughs> and speaking of <laughs> winter, oh, no. speaking of winter, you can buy your Here We Crew hoodies <laughs> and jumpers at hewecrew.com.au. Don't yes. forget to support the pod. Yes. Um, Sam oh, yeah, is still our concocting our membership subscription. Yeah, I get no help with anything, listeners. Uh, so. You have done nothing. Uh, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy gallivanting around the country taking photos. <laughs> but stay tuned because we will have something to offer all of our loyal listeners. Yes, we'll have a pack. <laughs> something good. Have a lanyard? We might. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, we could get some lanyards. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Sam's that. learning this as we go. Yeah, no, we've discussed lanyards. <laughs> I reckon maybe we get lanyards that people go, oh, no, because most people use the digital memberships these days, don't they? Mm. They don't even have a card. No. Anyway, That's yeah. why we need some lanyards. Do you? Just to make yeah. cards? A Here yeah. We Crow card. Yeah. We'll make you some what NFTs. Will it, what will it get you though? It'll have a QR code on it and you can approach people and get them to scan it and it'll take them straight to the pod. <laughs> we're going to make exclusive <laughs> alternate. advertising around there. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to uh, make exclusive alternate versions of our episodes with Ben hosting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that you can purchase. Good. Yeah. Oh, this just sounds like all killer, no filler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much to Alex for joining us, our GWS Nuff, and thank you to every one of our listeners that's managed to make it to this far into this episode. We're sorry we are a little bit rusty still. Speaking um, of sorry, do not apologise for this. Why? Because we will only get better, yeah. and you're just drawing attention to the fact that we're shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just saying, don't imagine that it's necessarily going to improve that much <laughs> as the season goes on. Well, I thought I was pretty good tonight, so yeah. whatever. <laughs> All right, well, I'm sorry. Okay, maybe it was just me. Uh, <laughs> look, we'll be, we're going to be back back week by week so we'll be back uh next we'll be in your podcast apps next wednesday early morning uh but for now uh we'll see you next week farewell go crows bye go crows